Hello and welcome to Ivy Learn Instructor Workflows, Customizing Your Course. My name is Kathy Long and I'm the Senior Training Specialist for the Center for Instructional Technology. Um, you are welcome again to participate by asking questions in the question box at any time. Today we're going to talk about some tips and tricks for how you can customize your content and personalize that and uh, some different resources that you can use to make that happen. We're also going to talk a little bit about um, the myth that's around what you can change in our online courses if you're using something from the library of online courses. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, there's been some policy changes. And uh, so far, the faculty that I've talked to about that has really been excited. So I think you will, too. Um, but we'll get into that in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and jump right into our Ivy Learn platform. Um, what you should be seeing on your screen right now is the Ivy Learn dashboard. And by default, of course, it always opens up to this dashboard area, which is where we access our um, course cards. And that's what each one of these classes represent, is this course card. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do as faculty members, and it is a policy requirement, is that all faculty are going to personalize their Ivy Learn platform by creating their profile and also um, their biography. And to do that, you go up here to this account setting. Okay, so right up here at the top of the global navigation menu, there's an account button. So when you click on that account button, you'll see that you can set up your profile, your settings and your notifications. We want to make sure that we're adding a picture and that we're adding a little bit of a biography about who we are. Um, this is something that helps build retention. There's all kinds of research about it. And if any of you have been um, participating in any of the webinars and any of the training that I've been doing in the past, you'll know I like to break it down into layman terms. And when we post that picture and that biography, it makes a connection. It makes us human to our students because sometimes technology and cyberspace can be a little impersonal. So I always like to um, liken that to someone calls you on the phone, it's a telemarketer, they're this faceless person, and no, you don't want any window estimates or any home improvements, don't bother me, and you hang up. It's easy to do, you're not looking them in the eye. But if someone knocks on your door and Susie's selling Girl Scout cookies, it's a little bit harder to turn her down, one, because it's Girl Scout cookies, and two, there's this little person looking you right in the eye. So that makes that human connection. So it's kind of what I, um, how I break it down in easier terms instead of going through all the research data, but there is research to promote this, um, that we can build retention by making it a little bit more human. And one way we do that is by setting up our profile. Um, we might have already been through this, so this might be a little redundant um, through our training, but this is part of our policy now that all faculty are required to set up their profile and use that notification system. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll just run through it really quickly for you. When you click on profile, you'll see that you can add your picture and you can edit using this button over here on the right hand side okay, to add this biography and the links um, that you might have to different information pages. Okay. To change your picture, you just click the little pencil icon. That pencil icon is something that you will see throughout the Ivy Learn platform. It always indicates that that item can be edited or customized in some way. When I click on the little pencil, I can upload a picture. So if you have had your picture taken and you really like it, you can upload that from your storage device. You can take a picture using your webcam here. And if you've used Canvas, um, what we call Ivy Learn, at a di different institution, you might have used this program called Gravatar. That's something that we haven't used yet here at Ivy Tech Community College. And I don't see it coming online for us um, necessarily anytime soon. But if you do have that service, you can also um, pick up a picture profile from there as well. And once you've added your picture to this area, you just click Save. It's very straightforward and very simple to use. Okay, So pencil to edit your picture, the Edit button over here to add your biography. Okay. This picture profile will show up all throughout the system. So anytime you send a message, which is called Conversations from our global inbox here or from anywhere in the course, your picture will appear. Your picture and profile will appear in the student um, roster, so you'll see your students' profiles. So you want to make sure that you're encouraging your students to create this as well. Discussion board posts, announcements, 
grading feedback, your picture will show up um, in every one of those areas. So you kind of think of it as a communication tool. So that's the first way we're going to personalize and customize our own Ivy Learn platform. All right, let's go back to the dashboard. So the next way that we can customize and personalize the course, um, every time you have a class added to your dashboard as an instructor or as a student, um, you will see up to 20 course cards that appear here on the dashboard. Okay? And by default, um, the system will give them random color blocks. So they come in looking like this. So my sandbox has a random color block that was added by Ivy Learn, and here's another color block that was added by Ivy Learn as well. This corresponds to the calendar. Okay, so that's very, very important. These color blocks are customizable by the individual user. So just because my IVYC 110 course has this blue color block, uh, my friend Harry Gray in the accounting department, if he was in that course with me, his color block would not necessarily be blue. It would be his own custom color or the color that was assigned by default in the Ivy Learn system. And this is why. Maybe um, my friend Marsha and I were both teaching classes and we both liked the color blue. Um, she might have her own course that's set up as blue and I might have a course that's set up as blue and we have our very own student who's taking both of our classes and when they go to the course calendar, both of the classes would show up with blue color blocks. So that's why we don't our color choices do not feed out to the student view, okay? Because when we get into this calendar, every calendar has a different color, a different color block, and we can customize those colors, okay? And the same thing for the student. They can customize these colors. And what happens when you have multiple um, courses selected in your calendar, you'll see that the different colors correspond, this is a better view, with the calendar items. So here I have some blue, which corresponds with my personal calendar. I have these yellow due, due dates that correspond with my demo course, and so on. It's a nice visual cue for our students on what is available and, and how that corresponds with the course. So the color blocks are customizable. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up, or if you have any questions, let me know in the question box. Okay, great. All right, thank you for confirming for me. Now, you'll notice on my dashboard page, I also have my courses that have different images or even a little giphy, a little animation for some of my courses. And my students, even though they can choose their own color block, will also see whatever image I select. So the images that I select to represent my course can be viewable by the student or are viewable by the student when they see it on their dashboard. Okay, so you can customize these courses. Okay, so the course view. All right, so if I'm teaching a chemistry class, I might have some beakers or an experiment or something going on in my imagery. Okay, um, Harry's an accountant, so he might have, I don't know, some accounting kind of things, a, a, I guess a pocket protector. <laughs> That's really nerdy, but it could happen. All right, so anyway, you can customize this. You can also customize your course in a pre pretty unique way. So let me go down here to my color block, the sandbox shell that I have. So you'll notice there's that pencil icon again. Okay, when I click the pencil icon, I can select a different color. Okay, so maybe I want my sandbox to be this pink color. I select that and I click apply. I've just changed my color block, and this now changes on my calendar as well. Again, customizable to only me. I can also, if I'm teaching four sections of English 111, I can actually give my course a nickname, because sometimes it gets confusing. I have four classes that say English 111, and I can customize that view for myself. So I click the pencil, and I can give that course a nickname. So maybe, um, I'm going to teach English 111, and this is my online section, okay, and I can add that notification. I could do English 
111, and maybe I meet just on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I can customize my view and easily pick out the course that I need. Okay, so it's kind of fun. You can nickname it anything you want. Students can also nickname it anything they want. Okay, and again, that is a customizable view for the individual user. And to make that stick, I would just click Apply, and then that information would apply would show up here. Okay. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back a second. <clears throat> okay. Now, if you want to add a picture to your color block, um, you're going to go into the actual course and you go to settings. Okay, so down here on the lower left hand corner on your course menu, you click settings. Settings are only available to you as the instructor. Students do not see this option. Right here under course details, okay, you can choose an image. So when I click choose image, I can drag and drop. So if I've taken a picture, um, I keep picking on Harry today because he's my buddy, but he's a big fisherman. And for the longest time, his Blackboard profile was him with this big fish. So he might have a great fishing picture um, that he wants to put up for his course. And he can do that by selecting um, from his, you know, browse your computer. Okay? You can also go directly to Flickr, which this is a, um, you know, a worldwide database of pictures. So I'm going to search Flickr, and we'll say I'm going to look for something. Um, well, let's just stay with the, the fishing theme here, okay? So maybe I want to select this little tropical fish. And you'll see that that tropical fish has now been added to my image box. And I update course details. <laughs> Harry tells me he's going to use a largemouth bass. <laughs> All right, so now that I've added my image here, I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And you'll now notice that my fish has been added to my shell. And so now students will see this fish. Okay, the color block still stays in place, and that color block is customizable by the student but they will see the fish. Okay. <laughs> All right, now, what if I want to add some animation? So someone said, I love the minions. So let me show you how I did that. I'm going to go back into my course, back into settings. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just erase this picture so I can start from scratch, but I could select change image, uh, but in this case, I'm just going to remove the image, so we're dealing with that same blank change image look. Okay, I'm going to go up here and open up a different tab, and I'm going to go to Giphy.com, and that's G-I-P-H-Y.com. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat box for you as well. But it's Giphy, G-I-P-H-Y.com. You can search for all kinds of different um, GIFs, and the GIFs are just moving little animations. They're very short. Okay, so you'll see here there's Carol Burnett. This is just kind of a generic page. There's the Bee Gees. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. Anything that you can think of is probably here. Remember, this is an academic institution, so please choose something that's academic, appropriate, or you know, kind of G-rated. You know, think about your audience here. We don't want to get too risque. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Someone suggested the minions again. So I'm going to just put them in um, and do a search. So I just entered in the name, and I did a search. Okay. So here's the one I originally chose, but we'll pick a different one this time. So here's some minions laughing. And I'm going to click their picture. And you'll see over here on the right-hand side, there's a download button. So I'm going to click download. And I'm going to select the smallest size. I'm going to click download again. 
you'll see that it popped up right here on my browser bar, and it's also in my downloads file on my computer. Okay. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to switch from my tabs up here back into my um, environment. So I'm still in my settings. I'm going to select Choose Image. And then I'm going to drag and drop this right from my browser bar into the image box. You'll see that I've now populated that area with my little Giphy. And if I scroll, I've got to save it, right? So I scroll down here to update my course details. And when I go to the dashboard, you'll see now that I've added my little laughing minions to my course image. And students can see that when they log in to their dashboard environment. So really, this is just something fun that you can do. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have anything whatsoever, you know, impact learning other than just making it a friendly um, environment kind of sets the tone um, for your course. All right, so that's Giphy, G-I-P-H-Y dot com, and how we customize our course cards. Oh, Susan asked a great question. Um, are there no copyright considerations with this source? Um, you want to make sure that you're using from the Creative Commons. If it's on the Giphy, it's usually a public resource. Flickr automatically takes us to the Creative Commons. And Creative Commons um, has some open education resource implications. So usually, if you're not going to be using that for um, to make money or profit, um, it kind of automatically filters that down to free use content. Great question, Susan. All right, so <clears throat> we've talked about before our course template. And I really like using our statewide course template when I'm getting started in the Ivy Learn platform. The template is based on Quality Matters standards. And Quality Matters is our national rubric um, that really focuses on easy navigation for students and then also um, the alignment of objectives with assessments. Okay, so QM, matter, QM um, Quality Matters template, highly recommend. So when we want to load our content, okay, and this is also how you're going to load the statewide content. So the Center for Instructional Technology has over 350 courses in the statewide library of online courses. Okay, so faculty can use the content from our online courses in traditional and hybrid sections as well. Okay? And this is going to be a different way how we load content than we've ever done it before. Each individual faculty member will be responsible for downloading their content into their course. Okay? So you're either, if you um, have a traditional course that you're teaching, you're going to build that content, or you're going to work with your coordinator and your online technology coordinator to build that content. But if you're using something from the library, you're going to use the course commons. Okay, so let me go into my sandbox. I just wanted to make sure that it was still blank. Okay, and I'm going to import from the commons. Okay, so I can go into the course, and I can import from the commons here or I can go to the commons on my global menu. And the commons is a huge repository of resources. So not only am I going to be able to download Ivy Tech specific content, but this is also a great resource for how I can download supplemental materials for my course. Okay? These are usually created by the Canvas community at large. So by default, it opens up to all the public resources. So there can be courses, individual modules, assignments, quizzes, discussions, um, pages or content pages, uh, documents, so supplemental materials, videos, audio, and images. So it's a very large repository. Um, it's up to you to decide if the content is correct or good for what you're doing. You can do a search. You can do it by type. You can do it by grade level. Or um, you can also do it by what was added most recently or what's most popular. Now, when we're loading a course, an Ivy Tech course from a statewide library, 
we want to make sure that we go into the Ivy Tech community. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my public records. Okay? All of our statewide courses, which are in the process of being released, have this icon here with statewide course, and then here's the course content. Okay, so you'll see that we've released these courses and their content is ready to be downloaded into your class. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm going to download the course template. So I'm just going to put in template. Okay, and you'll see that here's my statewide course template for summer 2017. I'm going to click this link. And I can import this into multiple sections. So again, if I go back and I'm teaching English 111 and I'm teaching four sections, I can select all of them. I can select all four courses that I'm teaching, however many courses I want this to be implemented in. Now, I have content in those other areas. So I want to go to my select, find my sandbox shell. Okay, so there's my sandbox. I click the link. It now says import into course. Okay. Now, if you are importing a course, like Accounting 101, for example, you want to try doing the download instead because the download preserves all of those course dates that have been established for you in the class. Because remember, we all are going to be um, adding our due dates for all assignments. We're all going to be using due dates no matter which delivery format we're in. So if it's online, hybrid, or traditional, we're going to be using those due dates. Everything in Ivy Learn is due date driven. So that to-do list that we see that populates on that dashboard, that's due date driven. The course calendar, based on due dates. The grade center, how it displays, based on due dates. So that really becomes an important communication tool in what we're doing. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and import this into my course. You'll see that a success message comes across the top of the page. And now it's kerchunking along. And while it's doing that, let me go ahead. It seems like we had a couple questions that come in. Will PCs or lead instructors be able to download or create content for the instructors, where there'll be a development or master that PCs, leads can set up and copy to adjuncts and iLearn? Yes. So Harry, what you would want to do is you would want to get with one of the online technology coordinators in your area. So Jennifer or Stephanie or even Shirley Miller um, to create a developmental shell. And you would build that content that you want to share out with your faculty um, in that developmental shell. And then you can publish that to the Commons and they can follow this process. Or you could um, work with your OTC to copy that course from your content into another. Okay. Now, you do have to be enrolled in those courses and as the instructor of record to copy from one section to the other unless you're an online technology, online technology um, coordinator, and they might have some additional privileges. But the best way to do that is really to publish it to the Commons and let those folks download it into the course. The nice thing about the Commons, too, is if the person who published it to the Commons updates the master and then they publish it again, you will get a notification that there's something in the course that's changed. And then you can see what those changes are and choose to accept them or not. Uh, Mickey has the question, how do you enroll as a program chair in Ivy Learn? Um, the program chair role has already been established for you, and that list and where we made those roles available um, are through on the My Ivy. I'm not going to get this right. On the MyIvy.IvyTech.edu portal, there is a list of all the program chairs across the state. That information is populated by your vice chancellor of academic affairs. Okay, so if you're not on that list, we haven't automatically created that role for you. If you don't see that as a program chair, you might want to reach out to your online technology coordinator. Okay, just remember, when you are going to enroll as a PC, um, your dashboard will only show 20 courses at a time. So you want to become familiar with this Courses button over here on the left-hand side, where you can see a complete list of all the courses that you're enrolled in or that you're um, using. All right, so let's go back into that dashboard.
and I'm going to go into my sandbox shell. Okay, so part of the cool thing about this developmental shell is we this module page is our home page. Okay, and we have this nice course banner across the top, and we have links to each one of our module areas. Okay, and you can do that by image or by the link that's listed below. So we want to be able to, we get this question all the time, how can I change my course banner? Okay, there's a couple of different ways. Um, we're trying to build all the banners here in the Center for Instructional Technology for our statewide library of courses. But we've also made this, uh, this is just an image, so you can't edit an image, but you can get the blank um, image and you can move that into um, Paint, which is available on all computers, or use Photoshop. So let me show you how to do that really quickly. So the number one thing you want to do, if you haven't already done so, you want to go down here on your global course menu, down to this Help button. So when we click Help, there is the Ivy Learn Student Resource Center, and then there's the Ivy Learn Resource Center for Faculty. Okay, when you click on that, this is our new click for help. Okay, so this is where you would get the key to use Respondus Download Browser. You can get access to some of the publisher content. Um, it really is our own Ivy Tech community. You'll see there's a lot of posts here um, from faculty who have been using and our support people who have been using Ivy Learn. We share tips here. Um, but this is also where you will also access um, the Ivy Learn course banners and images. There's also the Blackboard to Ivy Learn course transition guide. Um, so I will tell you, just as a, a warning, if you haven't got the message yet, Blackboard is really going away. You will not be able to access it after June 30th. It's bye-bye. It's dying. There will be no Blackboard. You will not have any access to that content ever, ever again. So please um, look at this guide and start transitioning any content you, you need from Blackboard right now because it's going to get here before you know it. Okay? So there's all these different resources that are located here as well. What we're going to look at here is this course banners and images. And when you click on it, it opens up to Google. Okay? And you'll see here that there's some page buttons and there's also the course banners. So when I click on the course banners, there are both Photoshop files. So if you're a Photoshop user, you can do it that way. Or the average faculty member who doesn't use Photoshop can use Paint. Paint is available on all computers. It's available from Microsoft. So if you're not sure where Paint is, um, you go down here to the Windows icon in the lower left-hand corner of your page or wherever your taskbar is located. And you can just simply, under Search, type in Paint and it'll come up for you, right? So you can select a JPEG, which is just an image, okay? And you can download that or open that up. And then when you go into Paint, whoops. Oh, I have it open, sorry about that, okay? You can download, you can drag and drop or open the image in Paint, okay? So this is what this looks like. And you're going to select the text box. So here's the text box, it's the little A. And you put the text box where you want it. And I want, actually want my um, font color to be white, so I'm going to select white. Okay, and then I just type in my new title of my course. I can move that around. I can actually change that color if I wanted to to something else. I just, you know, make sure that you're being accessible, being sensitive to accessibility issues. Okay. I've now created my own course banner. I'm going to go up here and save as, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Okay. And I give it a name, and I'm going to save it under my pictures just because that's where I prefer to have all of my images. And I'm going to click Save. Okay, 
So now I've created my own banner. Um, this is a static image. That was a great question. So Marion asked me the question, can you change this picture um, to something else? When you go into that document um, with all the banners are located, there are multiple banners to choose from. So let's see what happens if I open up this one. So there's different images, but there are different, um, this one's just someone using a computer. So there's different banners um, that have different images. If you have something very specific, that might be something that you could put a help desk ticket in for, or if you are currently developing one of those statewide courses, you definitely work with your instructional designer um, to come up with those images and we'll help you here in the center to create any customized banners. Um, but basically, there's a lot of different choices that you can use um, to create your generic banners. Okay. All right, so let's go back into the sandbox here. When you access the Faculty Resource Center for the first time, it's going to ask you to provide some credentials, and then we verify that you actually are a faculty member, because there is content in there that students should not see. So that happens within 24 to 48 hours, and you get access to our community there. All right, so now how do I change this? How do I change my banner? I've just created this great banner, and I want to change that. So I'm actually here on my home page, which is my modules. I'm going to click my Edit button. All right, I'm going to click that picture, and you notice it highlighted the whole image, and I'm just going to go ahead and click Delete. And then over here on the right-hand side in our sidebar content, I'm going to select Images. So I have links, files, and images. So I'm going to upload a new image, and I'm going to choose my file. I'm going to um, scroll down until I find my Ivy Learn image. Okay, so here's my new image, Ivy Learn 101 banner demo. I click the image and click open. All right. So here it's I've chosen my file. And now I have to select upload. And I'm going to open um, I'm going to add this to my course image file. So upload. You'll see it's now in my window. I've now added my new image. Let's go ahead and save that. So I now have customized my course. I've created a new banner, and I've added that to my home page. All right, so the other thing you might want to do is you might want to change these generic uh, module images. Okay, so we're going to follow that same principle. We're going to go to the Edit button. There's that pencil icon again. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this image. Okay, and I can either delete it or I can just go over here and I can go back to images. So if I have an image that's already selected, um, I'm going to find out what that is. I can search for it or I can upload it or I can search Flickr. So maybe there's something that I want to, um, let's say I want to add, we'll do a sunflower. I'm going to search, and you notice right here, Flickr is searching the Creative Commons by default. So Creative Commons, um, is these are searching pictures that we are free to use. People have published these um, as images that you can use um, in the academic setting. So I'm going to select my image. Okay, you notice that it got really, really big. So I want to use my handlebars. I just click on the image, and you'll see these little little squares on the corners. These are called the handlebars. I'm going to resize this. 
And the recommended is 125 by 125. And I don't think my aspect ratio is going to allow me to do that, but I'm going to do 125 there. All right, so now I have my image. Okay, so I've added my image. Now, in the template, both the image and the text below link to the module page. So I want to make sure that I link that back where it needs to be. So I'm going to highlight my picture. I'm going to highlight the text below. And I'm going to select links from my sidebar content. And this is module one. So I want module one to link to my module one overview page. Okay, and you saw that big flash of yellow that lets me know that the link has been created. All right, and once I've made those changes, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click Save. All right, so you now see that Module 1 has this image of a sunflower. I can click either the image or the title, and it takes me right into my Module 1 overview. So that is another way that you can customize your course by using the banners and the pictures. Now, I can add pictures anywhere I like. So for example, let's go to the announcement page. Okay. And I'm going to add an announcement to my course. And I'm going to click this embed an image. Okay, So I'm going to click embed image. And I can do this using a URL. I can search if I've already had an image in Canvas. So for example, um, I have my profile picture here, so I could add my profile picture. So if I was introducing myself to the class, um, to size that, again, I click on the image and I can use my little handlebars to make that larger or smaller than I would be. Okay, so I could go ahead and um, type up my little message there. Um, I'm going to delete that real quick. I can also add an image here from Flickr. So again, it's going to search the Creative Commons. So find Creative Commons images on Flickr. And maybe this is going to be my welcome. So let's just see what comes up if I search the word welcome in Flickr. Oh, so there's all kinds of little fun welcome signs. Um, let's see. We'll use this little wintry welcome page. I click Update. So I've now added this little welcome image. And again, I'm going to resize it to a more appropriate link. And again, so this might be my first image that I use when I'm welcoming my students, when I create my first announcement. So I've now added um, an extra image. I'm adding a little interest. So maybe if I'm doing weekly announcements as I'm teaching my course and I'm working through my workflows, maybe each topic has um, you know, something that's going to entice them to, to read and to look at it. Um, I know that when I'm teaching the online faculty certification courses and I try to use an image in my announcement page, People always comment on that, how that makes it more interesting and they, it, it draws their attention. So just something to think about. It's not a requirement, but it is a way that you can customize your information. The other thing that we can do, um, and if I wanted to save that, I would just click Save. Okay, so this is my announcement page. And here I have my little welcome announcement for my students. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and create another announcement. Because one of the things that is kind of fun and easy to use in the Ivy Learn platform is a video camera. Okay, so it's really easy to create um, lectures, online lectures. It's really easy to give student feedback using video. You can also use video in your discussion boards so students can interact through video instead of always typing. Um, it's pretty powerful and it's easier to use. Um, so let me show you how you can do that in your announcement page. So when I click Announcement, I'm going to click my little film strip. Okay. Um, sometimes my web camera doesn't uh, work when I'm doing this demonstration because it has a conflict with the, with the program. But what should happen is when I click Allow, 
the webcam comes up, see it says no camera detected. You would see an image here, your image here, and you would see a red record button. It's very straightforward. So when I click red, I record my message, hello, my name is Kathy Long, welcome to Ivy Learn 101, and I would give them my announcement. The other thing that I want to do, um, and you just save it, and it populates automatically to wherever you record it. Um, that's also available in grading feedback, as well as discussion board, um, and anywhere that there's a content area. So anywhere that this box appears, you can do a video recording. Now you want to be sensitive to our accessibility students. So for the welcome announcement, for example, I would also add a transcript. So maybe I have a script before I record my welcome announcement, and I would just attach that here. Okay, so students um, have different learning preferences. So I might want to watch the instructor or watch a video, or I might want to read about it. Um, so that reaches out to learning styles as well. So that's something that you can do here. I can also add to any content area, um, I can embed a video from YouTube. So if you're using Khan Academy or you have something on YouTube, maybe a lecture that you've recorded in the past that you want to add, I can actually add that here. So on the content editor, here's this little V, okay, and here's, it says more external tools. And that's a nice thing in the Ivy Learn platform. Anytime you scroll over an area, there's a little pop-up window that tells you what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and click um, the little V, and I'm going to go to Dropbox, or excuse me, YouTube. And I can do a search right here. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Ivy Learn. So one of the things that we talked about at the very beginning of our presentation today is that every faculty and student, we, uh, we're requiring faculty and encouraging students to create their user profile. So this Ivy Learn Function Junction Episode 1 is actually a brief, it's less than 30 minutes long, how to log in, how to navigate the global menu, and how to set up your profile. So if you missed that, you're welcome to watch it again, or this might be something that you want to use for your students to help them get acclimated as well. I can adjust the size, again, by using that little handlebar area. Okay. And I can maybe write a note to my students here. After reviewing how to, I can't type, set up your profile. <laughs> I'm a terrible typist. <laughs> Please confirm you have set up your account. by posting a response to this announcement. Okay. All right. I then click Save. All right. So now my video is built right in there. I have a message to my students. After reviewing how to set up your profile, please confirm you have set up your account by posting a response to this announcement. Remember, our announcement tool is now an interactive tool, not just a static message board. So as a student, I can say, I have set up my reply. I have set up my account. Okay, so they've confirmed with you. You'll see their name. And here's the kicker. If they tell you they've set up their account, but they haven't, their little image will not show up here, and you can call them out on it and say, wait a second, you forgot to add your picture. Okay, so you'll know. The other way that you'll know is when you go into your Grade Center, um, or even under Pages, or excuse me, under People. Oh, I'm in my Sandbox class. Um, so Kara's been invited to my Sandbox class. You'll see that her profile is here. Okay, if not, her little avatar would be missing. It would just be a little gray icon. So that's another way that you can customize your course by adding videos, uh, maybe it's something from Khan Academy, um, some professor or someone that you really liked for supplemental materials. This is a great way to do, to do that. Okay, so I have um, a couple questions here. How do I add images for my own content? Okay, Tony, we can do that. Let me show you really quickly. So again, um, are you talking, uh, Tony, can you just confirm for me that you are 
asking how to add images to that module page or to an announcement. And while Tony's answering that, um, Marion asked me, could you post a video welcome and the IB Learn function junction in the same announcement? Yes, you could. Okay, so you would just place your cursor, cursor where you wanted the first image to be, and then you would place a cursor um, and then post the second message. Okay, so if I go to my announcements, for example, and this could be in any content area, and I click my video, okay, and I would record my message, and it would turn into a little video here. Um, for my purposes, let me show you how I'd add multiple videos. Same way, same principle. Do my search. And I'm going to click Embed. I'm going to resize it. I'm going to insert message. Okay. Then when I hit enter, you'll see that my cursor is here. I select the next item that I want to add. I either select my record and upload media, or I can select another um, video. I'm going to resize it using those little handlebars. and I can select Save, and now I've added two videos or two resources to the same message. Okay, so very, very doable, Marion. Okay, so Tony's question did refer back to the module page. I just wanted to make sure that I understood correctly. So I'm going to go back here to my module page. We're just going to close the loop just a little bit. Oh, actually, it's on the home page. Okay. And I'm going to edit because I want to change an image. I'm going to select the image, okay, so I highlight the image, and then I'm going to go to my Images tab on my sidebar. I'm going to upload a new image. So I click Upload New Image. I'm going to choose my file. Okay, so when I choose the file, I'm actually going into my storage device. Okay, so I could change um, the area, whether it's the storage device, on my desktop, wherever that might be. And I'll just select another image, for example. Okay. And I click Upload. Okay, so I have to scroll down here and find my new image. And I have to resize it. And re remember, again, we're trying to get that to 125 by 125. You just keep dragging and dropping, dragging, dragging, dragging until you get the right size. All right, close enough for our demo purposes. All right, and then you're just going to save. Okay. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but this Ivy Learn platform is very um, mobile friendly. So, for example, if I was on, you're seeing my full scale session here. Um, if I was going to minimize or change the scope of my, whoops. Click the wrong button here. Okay, so if I'm going to actually, when I scale this course, I make it the screen smaller. It's going to make a liar out of me. Um, your content changes too. So if you're on a, a telephone, for example, if you've downloaded Canvas Mobile, um, these module buttons will appear in a line or side by side. So originally there were three 
in a row, um, the smaller the screen gets, it automatically adjusts the content. So now as we scroll down here, you'll see that all my modules are lined up one below each other. Okay, so it, it's very mobile friendly. So if you hadn't seen that before, it's kind of a cool functionality um, that we've not had before in a learning management system. Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. And I haven't even told you the good stuff yet. Okay, so I'm going to throw up a quick poll, a quick question for you. All right, so my question for you is, do you teach an online course that uses a course from the online library? Okay, answer the poll question by clicking the radial dial. I see some of you are um, answering in the question box, which is great, but I'm actually demonstrating a live poll. Okay, 90% have voted. I'm going to give you another 15 seconds to answer really quickly if you haven't already done so. All right, I'm going to share my poll results. So 89% of you in this current session do use courses from the online library, which is awesome. Um, again, you are welcome to use that content um, in any hybrid or traditional classroom experience as well, and you can modify that content um, to fit that delivery method. Now, we've already talked about how you're going to access that content through the Commons. The only courses that you won't find in the Commons are, are included courses and courses that are um, recognized as open education resources. That's kind of protected content um, that students pay for that content with their tuition. So our um, online technology, or excuse me, our online techno technologists will continue to load those particular courses for you. So included and open education resource courses, math, um, 123, for example, those courses will continue to be loaded for you. Everything else will be in the Commons. All right, so my second poll question for you is this. True or false, yes or no, can instructors modify content in an online course from the library, statewide library? Hmm, a lot of back and forth between the yeses and the noes. 90% have voted. Okay, all right, I'm going to publish these results. Okay, so 56% of you said, no, you cannot customize any content in an online course that comes from the statewide library. 44% of you said yes. Okay, prepare for your minds to be blown. Um, in the past, with the statewide library of online courses, you know, of course, if there was a typo, um, you, could, you could change it, you could always personalize your course with supplemental materials, um, but you could not change any assignments that were for a grade, right? Now you can. Policy has recently been changed in the last couple months, which allow faculty a lot more academic freedom. Okay, now you still want to make sure that the assignment that you're changing um, does align with the course objectives, because remember, quality matters standards, we want to align our objectives with our assessments. But, for example, if you do not like a discussion board question that's been created in that statewide library course, you can now change that question out for something that you do like. Okay? If you have a project um, that you don't particularly care for and you have another project, you can switch those out. Now, the key to adding your own content is that you don't want to change the points, okay? So the points have to remain the same. So if the course is worth 100 points, you can't add an extra assignment and say now it's worth 150 points, okay? So you're going to be exchanging assignments. So if you don't like a discussion board question, you can change it to something else. If you don't like um, a particular project, for example, um, you know, maybe here you have your students doing all the even problems, and next semester you want them to do all the odd problems. You can change out those assignments, but you just can't change the points possible for the course. 
Okay, so pretty powerful stuff, pretty cool. Um, that message is slowly getting out. It was approved by the RAOs a couple months ago in one of their meetings. So it is a new policy change. You can now make those types of customizations um, that you like. Now, we will still, our instructional designers will still work with course developers and course mentors um, when appropriate to develop those statewide online courses. We'll still upload and change those um, textbooks as they become available, okay? It's not going to be a free-for-all. We'll still provide that baseline content for you based on quality matters, standards, um, and you will still um, have that content available to you when the course begins, when the class begins. But you do have a little bit more flexibility on being able to switch out some assignments um, that are maybe you know, appropriate, time appropriate, maybe there's something going on, um, maybe it's an election year and you want to change out, you know, something to more current events, you can do that now. So pretty powerful and another way that you can customize your content. Okay. All right. So that is a lot of information. Um, if you have just two more minutes, I want to show you really quickly. We talked about the course commons for loading course content, but this is also a great resource for supplemental materials. So when I click on the course commons, for example, I can also, I'm going to search the whole public records right now, and I'm going to say I want to find a quiz. So I'm going to select a very specific type, and here's my tag. And I want to do something about with telecommunications. Helps if you can spell <laughs> or type correctly. OK. So now I can switch through here, and I can say, oh, here's a, a quiz on the American history um, of American television quiz. That sounds kind of interesting. Now, what I do um, like is there's all these resources in the commons, okay? But you can't see the content until you pull it into your course. So my recommendation for you, if you're searching for supplemental materials, which again is another way you can personalize your content, I would always pull this content first into my sandbox because that's what that's for. You know, use that sandbox to explore content, to practice something um, that you want to do. So I'm going to um, select, I've selected that quiz. I'm going to import it into my sandbox shell. And again, I just import to course. And now this content is going to load into my sandbox, and I just found a potential um, supplemental material that might close that learning gap for my students. Oh, thank you, Harry. I forgot to change my screen. Let me let me close out my settings here. Let me hide our poll. My bad. Let me walk you through that again for what I did. I went into the Commons. Okay. And by default, it opens up to public resources. When I'm looking for my Ivy Tech uh, course that I'm going to, impl or going to download, I'm going to switch off those public resources and just search our Ivy Tech community. Okay. But in, I'm looking for supplement materials, something that maybe someone else has created and is willing to share with me. I'm going to go ahead and look for all the public resources. And what I did is I selected quizzes, because I'm just looking for a little fun quiz. Um, You'll see that my tagline, I'm searching for quizzes. And I'm going to search for, I did telecommunications. Okay, And there's all these little quizzes that came up, all these different things. And as I scroll down through here, I happen to select um, the amazing history of American television. Okay, um, Here, a telltale heart quiz, a little Edgar Allan Poe. Um, you can select all kinds of different things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select the Amazing History of American uh, Television. I Again, I select the course where I want this content to be loaded. And as I mentioned before, this content, you can't really view what it's like or view the quiz until you get it into an Ivy Learn course. So that's what your sandbox shell is for. You can, you know, import things, you can practice tools, um, you can reset your content and delete it all out when you're done. So I'm going to import this into my sandbox shell first so I can review that particular um, content before I add it to my course. Marion asked the questions, can you search different grade levels? And absolutely. So let's go back into that search. I'm going to go to search field here. 
Okay, so I can search by type, which is all these things listed here. I can search by grade level, so I can do undergraduate. Um, I can do, let's see, I want to do quizzes and maybe assignments. Okay, I can also do the highest rated, the more, most relevant, um, whatever it might be, whatever one I want to do, the latest, the one that's most currently added. Let's do highest rated. Um, and let's see, we'll search for, whoops, <laughs> I cannot type today. I, <laughs> I still missed it. That is, okay, I've hit the U several times, okay. So now everything um, for accounting, for my undergraduate level, that's a quiz or an assignment, now populates um, here, and I'm searching the whole Canvas community. So this is people from all over the, the world, okay. Here's a sample final, exam, final practice exam. A county benchmark midterm. Here's Pinterest account. <laughs> um, so anything to do with accounting. So there's lots of different things here that you can choose from. Okay. And again, you can decide what type, what you want to search for. To say, oh, you know what? I don't want um, any quizzes. I just want assignments. I can remove that quiz button, and I can continue to scale um, what I'm searching for. So yet another way that you can customize your content. I really do appreciate your time today. Um, just an FYI, every Friday from 2 to 4, we're having drop-in um, question and answer sessions. So if you have a question that you would like to have answered or something else that you'd like to have demonstrated, you're welcome to jump in anytime between 2 and 4 on Friday afternoons. And myself or several other members of the Center for Instructional Technology will be standing by to help answer those questions. So as you continue to play with the service um, and continue to learn and try new things, we're here to help you um, with that. Okay, that link is available. Um, <clears throat> that registration link is available on the Ivy Tech training page. I put that in your chat box a little bit earlier. Okay, so you can register there. Uh, Mickey asked me, is that the same link on Fridays? So every time that you sign up um, for a session, it gives you a different URL, a different meeting space. So you want to make sure that you are registering for each session. That's a great question. Okay. I will stay online with you to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and again, thank you for joining me today for Instructor Workflows, Personalizing Your Course.